More fallout from the Ali Marpet retirement, including how the Buccaneers might replace him and how this might shift their offseason plans. Plus, it's a mock draft Monday with a fresh prediction from the Locked On NFL Draft folks, and we get cracking on these answers to our question of the week on today's Locked On Bucks podcast. Let's go. You are Locked On Buccaneers, your daily Tampa Bay Buccaneers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, Bucks Nation, and welcome to the Locked On Bucks Podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. It's your team every day. We are your daily podcast covering the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, free and available on all platforms, including YouTube. And we thank you for making us your first listen or view of the day. I am James Yarko, joined by my esteemed colleague, Mr. David Harrison. Both of us cover your Buccaneers for SB Nation's Bucks Nation. When we aren't there, when we aren't here, we are on the Twitter sphere at JRCO underscore Bucks, at DHarrison82, at Locked On Bucks, and at Bucks underscore Nation. Yeah, thanks for making us your first view or your first listen every single day. I wish you guys could see the dancing that James does when the uh, the, the intro music and video is playing, but literally... Like that's not even an outtake. I can't I can't record it because the video <laughs> overrides all that stuff. But it's it's very entertaining, which if you're ever wondering why I'm like laughing every time we come on, it's it's because of that. Um so twenty four hours has passed, give or take, depending on when you're watching or listening to this episode, right? Twenty four to forty eight hours has passed since Ali Marpet uh, has retired. You're not gonna lie, if, if you watch the video, you might have noticed that I had a, a wardrobe change from segment one to segment two and three. That's because we had already laid down the show. James, we recorded yeah. Lockdown Bucks for Monday. It was put to bed. We were like, ah, good to go. I could play some Fortnite with my kids or whatever they wanted me to play with them. And then Ali Marpet decides to retire because why should I have a little bit of free time on Sunday? Just kidding. Hey. Ali doesn't care about my free time anyway. But I, I wrote it up for Bucks Nation during the second period of my kids' hockey game. Yeah. Like, I yeah. missed the second period of the game because I'm happy right. to put this thing together. Which is also why James wasn't here to react to it on our Monday episode because he was busy being a good father and being a good deputy editor of BucksNation.com. But James, now you're here. I your am. other obligations are satisfied. So let's get your reaction to Ali Marpet retiring and the rumors that are already circulating that he might come out of retirement if the Buccaneers trade his rights to the 49ers. Oh, Just geez. kidding. Just kidding, guys. Just uh, kidding. He and Brady are going to come out of retirement together to wear the creamsicle uniforms in 2023. That I mean, I would be all for that, but I did see a fan who was like, conspiracy theory, Ali Marpet is retiring because of Tom Brady, and if they trade both their rights to the Niners, both will come back. I was just like, you know what? I'm leading with that on this episode. I just have to, I have to put that into the universe because it's so crazy that it couldn't possibly happen and come back on me. So let's just now pray that it doesn't actually happen. Yeah, I mean, it was it was a shock for sure. I saw I got the the notification of Greg Allman tweeting, you know, here's a shocker. Ali Marpet has announced his retirement. And it's like, well, we've been talking about this offensive line. And do they bring back Ryan Jensen or do they bring back Alex Kappa? Um, now you have the the entire interior could be gone. So yeah. that's that's rough now yeah. on the flip side i do think now that that allows the buccaneers to keep because i always felt they could keep jensen or kappa mm -hmm. i think now they're going to end up keeping both and they're going to have one of those spots to to fill and they could re-sign aaron stinney and so you could still have continuity there you yeah. could still have guys that know the system trust one another have all played really well obviously there's going to be some drop off when you lose ali marpet ali marpet should have been an all pro. He should have been a multi-time pro bowler. If he had played two or three more years, you could be talking about, you know, he had a hall of fame worthy career because he was so good and he was so dominant. He was just so overlooked, but I wish Ali Marpet the best. I really do. I understand it was kind of a shock to all of our systems. And he had cited that, you know, he hasn't sustained any major injuries and, and wants to live a, a healthy life. Actually, I believe it was his dad that, that came out and said that that was, that was a huge factor for him. Yeah. This is a guy that made over $30 million in, in his seven year career and he's ready to hang it up and move on to other things. I love that. He said, he's going to stay in Tampa and be involved in the community. And look, you see these older players or former players that can barely walk around by the time they're 45. 
I mean, I wish Allie the absolute best. You got your Super Bowl championship. You got to your Pro Bowl. You got paid. And now you can live uh, a, an outstanding life and, and continue to carry you know, carry on into new passions and new drives and, and new things that you want to do. So it sucks for the Buccaneers. It sucks for the Bucs fans. But I'm super happy for Allie Marpet, man. Yeah, absolutely. And, and yeah, I mean, his, his father talked about being incredibly proud of his son. And like you said, Ali made a little over $34 million over the course of his career. Some of that money uh, is about to get paid out. You know what I mean? He's about to get a large sum of money. And I mean, he comes across, right? I mean, I don't, I've never hung out and played checkers with him at house or anything, but I mean, he comes across as a very down to earth, kind of very simple person. Absolutely. Uh, not, you know, doesn't require a lot of flashy things uh, to enjoy life. So he's probably got a lot of that money Put away and and one of his teammates, Dominican Sue, is one of the the best financial minds that I've ever seen publicly display his intelligence on social media. So if he's been taking tips uh, from Sue at all, he's probably got a lot of money investments that he's going to be able uh, to work with. And then he's got a college education to back up. I mean, yeah, the the, the man is set up uh, for life again. I agree with you. I think that if awards and accolades were put on players for performance and their individual abilities versus team success, I think Ali Marpet would probably be a little bit higher on the grand scheme of evaluations of, of, for, from people with all pro uh, team births and pro bowl births, uh, certainly getting his first one before this season uh, should have happened. And who knows, maybe, you know what I mean? If he's got a couple all pros under his belt, a few, a few more pro bowls, maybe he does continue playing to try and make that push for hall of fame. But I think given what's gone on already and the lack of attention uh, he's been getting due to the team that he's been playing on, I think that pretty much that ship has kind of sailed. Uh, speaking of sailing, James, the Buccaneers, are going to uh, hoist the, the sails. I don't know. I don't know nautical talk. They're going to go across the pond to Germany. They're going to fly. They're not going to sail, although that would be really cool to see like the Buccaneers roll up on the coast. Uh, well, Germany might not be uh, be so excited to see them roll up on the coast of Europe and like invade. Uh, yeah, Let, let's let's get away from invasion talks. So the Bucks are hosting a game in Germany, James. That's, that's the news. They are. Uh, also, you know, Locked on Bucks live from Munich. I mean, why not? I mean, I just locked on Bucks there. week in Munich, Germany. I see no reason as long as we stay away from invasion conversations. Yeah, uh, you all can send us there by contributing to our GoFundMe that doesn't exist. But yeah, the the Bucks and are we're also not allowed to run. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Bucks are hosting a game in Munich, and it'll be the first NFL game in Germany. Now, the other teams announced as playing games overseas and the NFL didn't designate them the home team, like in their announcement, like they almost yeah. consciously stayed away from it. But then on the website, they're listed as the home team. Yeah. So I'm not really sure why they didn't just come out and say, Hey, these are the home teams for our over our international series, whatever the heck they call it. But along with the bucks, you have the Cardinals hosting a game in Mexico city. Then you have the saints, the Packers and the Jaguars all playing in London. So, David, I mentioned this on a solo episode a couple of weeks ago uh, that the the rumor was it was going to be the Super Bowl 55 rematch, the Buccaneers and the right. Chiefs in the game in Munich. Well, what if it's not the Chiefs, David oh. Harrison? What if it's somebody else? And look, we we took a look at the opponents and I don't know. What are, what are your thoughts on on who it could be if it's not the Chiefs, even though the Chiefs seem to make a lot of sense? The, the Chiefs do make a lot of sense, but you know what? There were a lot of games that made sense for the Buccaneers to open up with at home to start they, this last season, and they didn't do that. Instead, they chose to go with the Cowboys and Buccaneers, and my theory on why they did that is because they knew that that Cowboys-Buccaneers game was only going to get the ratings it was going to get as the first game of the season or super late in the season. Even then, you're rolling the dice that the Cowboys are still relevant and considered one of the dominant teams in the NFL. I kind of see, I think I think the, the NFL might go the same way. It's the first game in Germany. It's an overseas game. So it's already going to have all the buzz in the world. Like if you're a football fan, an American football fan in Munich, Germany, this is it, man. Like there ain't no other competition. So you're getting the Falcons or the Panthers. Like that's who you're going to get. Mm. I don't think you're getting the Ravens because Lamar Jackson is attractive. I don't think you're getting Russell Wilson, the Seahawk. Now, if Russell Wilson goes to the Bucks, that might change things a little bit. The Rams, you're going to get ratings on that. That's probably going to be a primetime game. The Bengals is probably going to be a primetime game. I think you're getting Falcons, Panthers. I think uh, we've seen some other, Matt, like Dolphins, Jets overseas, and it's packed. It's fully sold out. The ratings are through the roof. I think the NFL is going to NFL this thing, and you're going to get one of these, these lower. It's either going to be Ravens, Falcons, or Panthers, but I think it's going to be Panthers 
because it's it's a lower division rival uh, competition, and you may actually have a new quarterback in Carolina, which gives the NFL a little bit when people say, ah, you just threw a trash matchup out there. Like, no, 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 look, the Panthers have this new guy. That That's, that's attractive. That's where I yes. think they're going to go. That's what the NFL needs to do. Our first ever game in Munich, Germany, headlined by Sam Darnold versus Kyle Trask. Yeah. Yeah, or Matt Corral or like Matt Corral versus Blaine Gabbert. I don't know. Okay. Like that's that's what I feel like they're going to do. No, because on the on the off chance that the Buccaneers end up rolling with Blaine Gabbert or rolling with Kyle Trask, you have to have guaranteed star power in that game. I don't think they're going to roll out a divisional matchup. Again, that's why the Chiefs make so much sense because you have Patrick Mahomes. It's, it, it is a Super Bowl rematch. Mm-hmm. Or they're going to send a team from the Super Bowl this past year over there with the growing star power of Joe Burrow, Jamar Chase, uh, it's an exciting Bengals team, and and I think it would make a lot of sense to say, yeah, the Buccaneers were going to be a lot of fun to watch if Tom Brady was under center in this game. But instead, we apologize. Here's Joe Burrow and Jamar Chase. Enjoy yourselves, Germans. I mean, that would be that would be the optimal plan. Honestly, is the Bengals and the Bucks uh, because you do have the star power, and you're rewarding Germany basically. But you're already kind of rewarding, like I said. I mean, it, it could it could be a preseason game, man. It's going to be sold out because it's in Germany, and that's the only game they're going to get to see. But no matter who's playing who, there's going to be odds. There's going to be props, and BetOnline.net is going to be the place that we send our listeners and viewers to get all of their information. But while football is over, basketball is still running hard. Pro and college hoops both going on right now. And for all your latest odds, totals, player performance props, and where the next coach is going to get hired, BetOnline.net is still your number one spot. For all sports betting needs across all leagues, Bet Online remains the best spot for your sports scores, podcasts, and news this season. And right now, it's not just basketball. You've still got hockey, boxing, and you've got UFC odds. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and the action with Bet Online, where the game starts. Thanks again, Bucks fans, for making us your first listen or your first view of the day. Make sure you're also following Locked on NFL. Locked on experts covering the biggest stories around the NFL every Monday through Friday in less than 30 minutes. It's also free and available wherever you get podcasts, just like the Locked On Bucks podcast, which you can also find for free because Twitter is free on Twitter at Locked On Bucks. You can find James and I at JRCO underscore Bucks at D Harrison82. And then find everything we're writing over BucksNation.com on Twitter at Bucks underscore nation. So the Buccaneers have yet another glaring hole to fill. With the unexpected retirement of Ali Marpet James, and it's not going to be easy to replace him. But just like CSI, in less than 10 minutes, we're going to fill this vacancy, James. So let's get to it. Yeah, one of the names, if they if they go the free agency route, one of the names that jumped out to me is Ike Betker uh, out of Buffalo. This is a guy, he just tore his Achilles in December, but he is a solid interior lineman. He, you know, and, and it goes back to if they get a Russell Wilson, if they get a Deshaun Watson, somebody that's a, you know, a mobile quarterback that extends plays, you know, Betker has that experience. Now he, he knows exactly how to take care of business in the trenches while his quarterback is back behind him improvising. That's not something the Buccaneers had to deal with, with Tom Brady over the course of the last two years, his over the cap valuation is around 4.2 million. So not only are you getting a really, really good starting guard to replace Ali Marpet, but he's also coming in at about 60% less than what Ali Marpet was going to cost the Buccaneers. So that allows them to utilize some of that money to go back to bringing back Alex Kappa or bringing back Ryan Jensen. Ultimately, I think they get a deal with Stinney Dunn. Uh, but you you would like to see Kappa and Jensen return as well. If, if Kappa is priced out, Betker would be an outstanding option. And you could end up with Betker and Stinney basically for less than the price of Ali Marpet by himself. So that frees up some money to go elsewhere. Yeah. And another free agent option, uh, Super Bowl champion, you know what I mean? Replace one Super Bowl champion with another Super Bowl champion, Austin Corbett, unrestricted free agent coming out of the Los Angeles Rams organization. If the Rams don't lock him down, which they certainly could, they're actually one of the teams that has the most amount of money they could free up with some simple contract renegotiations or restructures. So they could decide to bring Corbett back and they would be smart too. Why? Because the guy hasn't missed a game in two years. You talk about both the seasons where they were really considered contenders for the Super Bowl since their last trip to the Super Bowl where they lost um, that matchup. 
Austin Corbett has been one of their starting offensive linemen for that entire stretch. And I think it's very valuable uh, that, you know, what do they always say? The best ability is availability. Austin Corbett showed plenty of it. His evaluation around 8.3, $8.4 million. So not as much as an Ali Marpet, but still pretty significant. And you might get a little bit of an accelerator because of the Super Bowl championship and because of the free agent market. But either way, somewhere around eight to ten million dollars is what you're going to get him for. He's younger. Uh, he's still going to have a lot of longevity, and it allows you to keep some of those other players as depth pieces if you get to bring them back. But James, let's go even younger. Let's start with our NFL draft options. And the first name that came to mind when I looked at this team and what they might do is Tyler Linderbaum because he is a center. He is out of Iowa. But you're going to say, what about Robert Hainsey? Well, maybe you move Linderbaum to guard. He's an interior offensive lineman, right? Not so fast. Linderbaum, too, over, too undersized, and his arm length really not good to fit him as a guard. But we do have a guy in Robert Hainsey whose original position is guard. You kick him back over to guard. Not the first time the Buccaneers have moved a guy from one interior line position to another. You make that transition with him, and there's your, there's your young nucleus offensive line. I still think you try to bring back an Aaron Sidney if you can. Obviously, you want to re-sign Alex Kappa. But if you can't bring back Ryan Jensen, you bring in a first-round pick center. He is a little bit undersized. So you're going to want to bulk him up a little bit. Certainly not uh, the the presence that Ryan Jensen is, is, has been. Uh, he won't be his first year. But he's a guy you can build around with whoever your new quarterback is. Yeah, I certainly don't hate that. I just personally would rather they address another position in the first round. But there's no doubt if you're going to spend the first round capital on on Linderbaum, you're going to get what you pay for. I mean, the guy is going to be an, an absolute stud in the NFL. So I don't hate that idea at all. If, if that's the direction they want to go, I mean, they very well could. They could, you know, bring back Carlton Davis and and they reach a deal with Chris Godwin and you know reach a deal with with some of these other free agents they have pending. And now all of a sudden, your glaring needs are along the offensive line and maybe running back, maybe defensive line. So you could be in a situation where he is the best player at a position that you desperately need. So I like that pick. I, of course, though, lean a little bit more towards, let's take a look at day number two. Jason Light has had a lot of luck uh, being able to find second, you know, second day, round two, round three, round six, in, in Alex Kappa's case, um, talent, starting talent. Along the offensive line, I would like to see them go after a guy like Ed Ingram out mm -hmm. of LSU. This is a guy that can probably be drafted where the Bucks are already drafting at, you know, in the second round. Might take a little bit of maneuvering, trade up, you know, a few spots, maybe, maybe even as, as many as 10. But this is a guy that can step in and start right away. And I, I just like the idea of addressing a, a, sexier quote unquote yeah. position in the yeah. first round with that fifth Absolutely. year option uh and then addressing the the o line on day two just because jason light's track record of day two offensive linemen is pretty impressive and i trust yeah. him to find a starter in that range i mean ali marpet was a day two offensive lineman so all yeah, right well, so was, how so can was you so is Donovan Smith. So it's hard to argue with that. Listen, uh, you've already kind of talked a little bit about how this might impact the way the Buccaneers are going to approach the offseason. I think before Ali Marpet retires, you you want to bring back at least one of either Alex Kappa or Aaron Stinney. Mm -hmm. Ryan Jensen is going to – I think Ryan Jensen, a lot of that's going to depend on the quarterback. I still think it's going to depend on the quarterback. If you bring in a veteran like Russell Wilson or something like that, you want a veteran center to go with him. If you bring in a younger guy uh, like Deshaun Watson – or if you do turn to the draft, which I don't think they're going to, but or if you're running with Blaine Gabbert, you're running with Kyle Trask, you can kind of roll out there, I think, with Robert Hainsey because you have a little bit more time to build. And Robert Haynes, remember, has been working with Blaine Gabbert and Kyle Trask. So there's already a little bit of a relationship there. So you save a little bit of money on Ryan Jensen. With this move, James, I think you have to bring back two of the three. When you talk about yeah. Ryan, Aaron, and Alex, you have to bring back two of the three. I would not be angry. I love Ryan Jensen. I just want to put that out there. I would not be angry if the Buccaneers – Resigned Alex Kappa, resigned Aaron Stinney, and actually went after a guy like Dylan Parham out of Memphis on day two in the NFL draft. He's a guy that really impressed in the senior bowl. He's still actually kind of learning the interior offensive line game because he started off as a defensive lineman, but he took snaps at center, did really well, took snaps at guard, did really well in both. So you, you can address the sexier positions earlier, bring him in, and then you look at basically you got Stinney, Kappa, Hainsey, and Parham, the best three guys 
go out there. The rest, the, the other two, you're being developed in your depth. And I think that's a really good start to rebuilding that offensive line. Yeah, no question about it. There, there are a lot of options out there. The question is, which direction is Jason Light going to go in addressing now, you know, another hole along the offensive yeah. line with all the other positions that he has to address. But want to give a quick shout out to one of our listeners. We knew he was going to answer our question of the week. And for those of you that don't remember or didn't hear, our question of the week is who is your all time favorite NFL player to never suit up for your favorite team? So obviously it's going to be a list of, of players that have never played for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And David, you specifically called out Josh Gardner. Uh, on- yeah, you kind of had to answer. I mean, you know what I mean? You kind of put him in a position, kind of put you on the spot, but he answered. So he did. He did. So he tweeted question of the week at locked on bucks. David, there is a Gator, of course, but I used to watch other games just to see Derek Thomas, Barry Sanders, Dan Marino play would watch Euler games as a small kid to see Earl Campbell. But at Emmett Smith, 22 favorite non Buccaneer of all time. Josh, I can't even hate on you for that. When I was in the fifth grade, David, I wrote a biography mm-hmm. and, you know, I use biography loosely because I was in the right. fifth grade, but right. it was like a 10 page report on the life of Emmett Smith. Hey man, one of the greatest to do it ever. Hard to argue. Yep. Absolutely. It was because of Emmett Smith that whenever I played NCAA football, I always used the Gators. There I'm not even a Gators fan. I never use the Gators, but you know what? If I would have, it probably would have been because of Emmett Smith. I just liked the all blue, the blue jerseys with the yeah. blue pants. I was a big fan. Yeah. But if you all want to answer the question of the week, of course, you can send in an email to lockedonbuckspodcast at gmail.com. You can call in to 813-444-5841 and be part of the show, or you could tweet us like our guy Josh did. We want to hear what you have to say because we love all of you the way that Rock Auto loves their customers because with the ever-increasing numbers of makes and models, it is now impossible for your local chain auto parts store to stock all the parts that you need. Why endure often pointless or seemingly intimidating questioning while you wait as the person behind the counter orders the parts on their computer, choosing the only brand that their warehouse happens to carry. You have computers with access to rockauto.com at home and in your pocket. You can save time and money. Why would you choose to spend 30%, 50%, 100% more for the same parts from a chain store or an or a car dealership? Don't do that. Head to rockauto.com. They are a family business serving do-it-yourselfers for over 20 years, and the prices are reliably low for every customer go explore their easy use website today and find the solution for you for your auto parts needs go to rockauto.com right now see all the parts available for your car or truck right locked on in there how did you hear about us box so they know we sent you amazing selection reliably low prices all the parts your car will ever need rockauto.com wrapping things up here on a Mock Draft Monday for you YouTubers or a Mock Draft Tuesday edition for you podcasters here on the Locked on Bucks podcast. James Yarko, David Harrison at Jarko underscore Bucks at D Harrison 82. So another position of interest for the Buccaneers. And is it going to affect a new Mock Draft that just dropped? Because our own Ryan Tracy and Eric Crocker of the Locked on NFL Draft podcast dropped a mock draft and here is how things shook out so our top five picks first and foremost uh evan neal offense tackle out of alabama going to jacksonville with the number one overall pick Kayvon thibodeau the edge rusher out of oregon heads to detroit with the number two pick i still hate that pick i don't know why people keep doing that um aiden hutchinson number three goes to houston uh, out of michigan david ojabo so back-to-back wolverines which is amazing i don't know why such a struggling program would have back-to-back top five picks uh, Ed Rusher goes to the New York Jets. Oh, that, that makes sense. Um, E.K. McQuanu, offensive tackle out of NC State, goes number five to the New York Jets. Fast forwarding, James, all the way down to number 27, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers take wide receiver Chris Olave out of Ohio State, and the people rejoice. They do rejoice. Uh, 
So segment two, we talk about a center from Iowa. Now we're talking about the Bucks getting a lot of it. We are a Big Ten podcast. That's all we're there is. Big to Ten it. podcast. Locked on Absolutely. Bucks, Big Ten podcast. Here's what I'm noticing though over the course of these these uh, mock drafts. So the top five in this year's class. Really, probably the most fluid top five I think that we've seen in a very, very long time. Like when you talk about who's going to go number one overall, who's going to be in the top five of the class, all that stuff. I think it, it switches a lot, but we're starting to see it stabilize a little bit. I mean, Neil Thibodeau, Hutchinson, and Aquanu out of out of NC State. For I mean, trench trenches, right? That's that's where the game is won and lost. That's basically what you're seeing here. David Ajabo. I've seen him at like seven. I've seen him at eight. But I've seen him at four like he is here. I think there's like I think four out of the five spots. I think Neil Thibodeau, Hutchinson, Aquanu, they're top five. I think we're kind of getting to that point. They can solidify that this week, obviously, at the NFL Scouting Combine. But I, I just – I hate – unless there's like real intelligence behind it. I mean, the opportunity for the Detroit Lions to bring Aiden Hutchinson to their right. franchise from the University of Michigan. And I'm not even a Michigan guy, but the opportunity – I mean – yeah, if, if you're if you if you have Kayvon Thibodeau ranked above Aiden Hutchinson, it's barely like it's it's such a minimal ranking ahead of Hutchinson. Like they're basically the same evaluation ceiling to floor. You know, there's some differences between them, obviously. But I think if you're the Detroit Lions, the opportunity to bring Aiden Hutchinson to your team cannot be ignored. But it is what it is. Um, I love the pick of Chris Olave, obviously. Uh, Jahan Dotson's still on the board when he gets taken, but I think Chris Olave is above Jahan Dotson. I think you take I him agree. over him. And, and the idea of Mike Evans with Olave and hopefully with Godwin uh, and with Cam Braid and whoever else they bring in, I mean, whoever that quarterback is, like you're you're one of the most blessed quarterbacks in the National Football League as far as I'm concerned. Looking at the rest of the NFC South, though, James, at number 18, uh, the second place in the division. That's right, Cam Jordan, second place in the division. New Orleans Saints take Andrew Booth, quarterback out of Clemson, who is a great cornerback. Uh, prospect, so I, I hate that for the NFC South, but uh, can't can't argue with the pick there. Number eight, Trevor Penning, offensive tackle out of North Northern Iowa, goes to the Atlanta Falcons, who's another guy. I've seen him at like twenty eight. I've seen him at like six. Um, so the evaluation is all over the place. Charles Cross, offensive tackle out of Mississippi State, who seems to be a fairly reliable top ten, top twelve prospect, goes to the Carolina Panthers. Um, for what it's worth, though, Linderbaum, my pick for the Buccaneers potentially draft goes 19th overall to the Philadelphia Eagles. Uh, your guy not in the first round, which is why you mentioned him as a day two pick because he's a day two pick. Uh, Jamari Salyer out of Georgia, just for argument's sake, in this mock draft, the top interior offensive lineman left on the board when the Buccaneers come around at 27. Obviously, there's a lot of, of, of moves that are going to happen between now and then. But even if you don't bring back Ryan Jensen, even if you don't bring back both Alex Kappa and St- like let's say the Bucs only get back Alex Kappa. I still don't go Salyer over a Chris Olave or a Jahan Dotson. Just to be, just, I, the, you're, if you do go Salyer, you're reaching for a position over talent, and I, I think that's a bad decision. Just because I like to watch the world burn, David. Uh, the Bucks come up and pick number twenty-seven. Olave is sitting there. So is Linderbaum. Who are you taking? I mean, with the roster as it stands right now. You have uh, to go Linderbaum. I mean, let's say, let's say that situation is the same thing. They only re-sign uh, Kappa. You only re-sign Kappa. Do you have Godwin? No. Then you go Olave. Honestly, even if you uh, have Godwin, you go Olave. I can't say that I disagree. I can't. I can't because we all know my feelings uh, as much as my blood boils with hatred for Ohio State. Olave is is legit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, David, we are going to get out of here. Uh, we thank you all for making Locked On Bucks podcast your first listen or view of the day. Now make your second listen, the Locked On NFL Draft podcast. We just talked about those guys. Listen to what they have to say. Ryan Tracy and former NFL cornerback Eric Crocker bring the NFL draft to life every day with insight and analysis on college football prospects and NFL front offices. It is also free and available wherever you get your podcasts. Send in your answers to our question of the week. Who is your all-time favorite NFL player to never suit up for your favorite team? Or you can just send us questions, topics, thoughts, anything you want. Send this into LockedOnBucksPodcast at gmail.com or call in. Be part of the show at 813-444-584. 
one. Check out everything David and I are doing over at BucksNation.com. Follow along on Twitter at LockedOnBucks, at JRCO underscore Bucks, at DHarrison82, and at Bucks underscore Nation. Hope you all have an absolutely outstanding day. Stay safe, stay healthy, wash your hands, be good to one another, fire the cannons. We thank you so much for joining us right here at Locked on Bucks.